Well, hello everyone and welcome to the asynchronous version of Healing Stories, How to Write About Your Pants Pandas Journey, Nonfiction Edition. So welcome, my name is Quinn and I'm going to be using my experience as a writer and as an editor to give you a better idea of how you might want to approach writing your healing story. There are a number of reasons why you might want to write about your own experience. You might want to cope with and express pain, educate others about your experiences, provide representation, connect with others to feel less alone, understand yourself better, put difficult emotions into words, or maybe to work through trauma. One thing I'd like to remind you of before we begin is the growth mindset. The growth mindset is essentially that nobody is born with talent, they have to develop their talent. Remember that skills are learned, so practice is essential. You're not going to wake up one day and magically be good at writing. Try not to think of mistakes as failures and only as steps towards success. My favorite example of this is when I was 13, I wrote a novel and it was horrible, but it wasn't a failure, it was just a step towards me writing a better novel later. I'd encourage you to find value in sharing your progress with the community and to celebrate improvements and let setbacks, in quotations, be an opportunity for growth. And remember that you can always know more. I might have been writing for many, many years, but it still doesn't mean that I know everything. Over at Inflamed Brain Alliance, we kind of came up with this idea of a healing story, which isn't a real subgenre, but we're still calling it that. In our eyes, a healing story is a writer trying to explore their experiences through writing. There are a number of different ways you can explore your experiences through writing, including creative nonfiction, fiction, and poetry. Today, we're going to be focusing on creative nonfiction. The essence of creative nonfiction is that you're writing something that actually happened, but in a creative way. It can be short or it can be long, but either way, your promise to the reader is that you're telling the truth. I highly recommend this as a starting point for your healing story because you're essentially just writing what happened to you and you don't have to make up a plot. Some common nonfiction subgenres are memoir, interview, personal essay, biography or autobiography, journalism, and opinion editorial. There's also something called genre blending, which is when you put two genres together, such as drama plus nonfiction, which could be like a screenplay or a documentary, graphic literature and nonfiction, which could be a comic about your experience or an informational picture book. There's something called autofiction, which is technically classified as fiction, but it has a lot of nonfictional elements. So you could write an autobiography or a memoir, but it's not entirely truthful. For example, you could write about your experience with disability, but maybe you swap out your disability for a superpower and make it kind of like a sci-fi. Lyric essays are a very beautiful form. They're personal essays, but they're poetic. Sometimes they're written in verse. Actually, they're quite often written in verse. So you'd basically be writing a really long poem about your experiences. An important part of creative nonfiction are sensory details and imagery, because that's what makes it creative. Everything that you see, feel, hear, smell, and taste are sensory details, which are forms of imagery, which is what the piece of writing wants you to be picturing. There are two main types of imagery. There's literal imagery, which are descriptions of what are actually happening, and figurative imagery, which would be metaphors, analogies, similes. Figurative imagery is essentially getting your reader to picture something without describing what's actually happening. So for example, butterflies in the stomach. You know that butterflies aren't actually in your stomach, but you can picture what that feels like. This is an exercise you can try, which is thinking about what happiness means to you. I want you to picture an actual place. It could be real, it could be fictional, and I want you to describe what it looks like, feels like, sounds like, smells like, and tastes like with as much specific detail as possible. Memoirs and personal essays are the most conducive genres for getting out a personal story. Both of them tell a story from a moment in time or an aspect of your life. They're not telling your entire life story, just a part of it. With memoir, the author reflects on their memories, and normally the only purpose of a memoir is to share a story. But with personal essay, or sometimes referred to as first-person essay, the author is trying to prove a point. It's kind of similar to an essay that you might have written in school where there will be a thesis and then there will be body paragraphs to back up the thesis, except with personal essay, instead of using actual facts, you're using your experiences. The author will try to connect their experiences to the reader or the outside world to get their message across. Memoirs and personal essays are very similar in tone. The main difference is that memoirs are trying to write an experience for the purpose of writing an experience versus personal essay is writing an experience for the purpose of getting a message across. Before starting a memoir, here are some tips and tricks. I'd like you to ask yourself, what part of my story do I want to tell? Maybe you want to tell your whole journey with Panzer Pandas so far, or maybe only your life until the diagnosis was discovered. Maybe how you felt during the darkest part of your journey and how you found your way out of it. Or perhaps all your doctor's appointments until you found a good one. Determining your starting and ending points can sometimes help with figuring out what you're going to put in the middle. And I will always preach this, that the more specific you are, the easier the story will be to write so that you're not overwhelmed by all the little details you have to include. 
Also ask yourself what you want to achieve. If you're writing for yourself, maybe ask yourself what do I hope to learn or feel after writing this? Or if you want to share your story later, maybe ask what do I want readers to take away from this? Some examples of this would be, I want to share my story so others don't feel so alone. I want to work through some difficult emotions. I want to relate to readers who also have my condition. I want to connect with readers who don't have my condition. I want to write all my story to understand myself better. I want to offer a new opinion on a particular subject. Or perhaps you want to challenge readers' way of thinking. The point of view that you tell a story from can influence the tone quite significantly. But luckily, with memoirs and personal essays, they are always written in first person so you don't have to choose. There will likely be fluctuations between past and present tense, so you might be saying, I did this, I felt that, and then be saying, I'm doing this, I'm feeling that. First person is great at staying connected to your own voice, and it's really great to form connections with readers. You can come across as conversational, or you can come across as distant, and I normally determine this by imagining what my audience is. If I want to be conversational, I'll imagine that I'm having a conversation with one person, maybe a close friend, and I'm telling the story to them. If I want to be more distant, then I'm probably going to be picturing myself on the center of a stage talking to an audience like I'm giving a TED talk. You don't have to decide what tone you want to take right away. This is something you can discover as you write. I just want you to be aware of this because everyone has a different voice, which means that there are a number of different tones that you can take and you can combine multiple things together. For example, you might want to be opinionated but also reflective, or maybe you want to be comedic but then transition to emotional. Now, actually starting the memoir might be a little bit overwhelming if you haven't done a lot of writing before. So where do you begin? Just start. Just start writing. It's fine if it sucks because you can always edit it, but you can't edit what you haven't written yet. Some common starting points for memoir in terms of the narrative, so when you first open up a memoir, this might be where it's beginning. You can start at the chronological beginning where it all began, or you can start at a random moment in your journey that might have a lot of significance to you, such as like the darkest part of your journey or the most hopeful part. You could also start at present day. Maybe you're describing the desk that you're currently sitting at as you're writing it. Maybe you see that your calendar has a whole bunch of doctor's appointments on it, or there's a photo album over there. If you start at present day, often this is enough to situate the reader and then you can pull them into a memory. You could also start with a fact or statistic, maybe a description of a person, place, or thing that's integral to the story, like maybe you want to describe the doctor who gave you the diagnosis of Panzer Pandas. You could start with an analogy or metaphor to pull the reader in, or you could even start with a quote, like a famous quote, or a piece of dialogue from maybe a friend or a family member that was really significant to you at the time. Some things to consider would be, regardless of what point in your journey you start off with, try to set the scene with imagery so that you're able to ground your reader. Of course, if this is only for you, you don't have to worry about that too much. Try to think about what was going on at the time, what could you hear, feel, see, etc. Remember those sensory details. Memoirs are not typically chronological, they often are composed of scenes that bounce back and forth between reflection and memories. It's okay if you can't remember a lot of details from a specific memory, you can just summarize it and then continue on, and you could always go back later to add details if you'd like. So in terms of structure, what I'd recommend is decide what memories you want to include. Write them down somewhere and then map out what order you want to tell them in. Once again, this does not have to be chronological. Then use reflections from your current self to string these memories together. It's kind of like your memories are the map and then your present voice is the tour guide that's like bringing the reader to each of these memories. Let me give you a quick example. My body is no longer my own and I am terrified by Linda Chavers as a personal essay about chronic illness and it's fantastic. The first four paragraphs of Chavers' essay begins with two memories and then two reflections. There's no right or wrong way to do a memoir, so if you want to have a lot of reflection, that's great. If you don't want to have a lot of reflection, that's cool too. I'd also urge you to think about being respectful when you're writing creative nonfiction. Some things to consider would be names. It's very common practice to replace the names of real people in your story with fake names. It's also a courtesy to ask permission if you can include someone in your story if they're like an important part of the story. I'd also urge you to think about whose story you're trying to tell. Only try to tell your own story, don't try to voice someone else's emotions. If you are the parent or a sibling of someone with pans or pandas and you're writing your story, remember this is your story, so write about your feelings. Don't try to cover the feelings of your sibling or your child. Nonfiction calls for truth, and the only truth that you can ever give is your own, so make sure that you're telling your truth. If you're debating whether or not you want to use your real name, if you want to publish this, or if you'd like to use a pen name, keep in mind that it's industry standard for authors of creative nonfiction to use their real names because it acts as an insurance of truth. I don't personally believe that this is ethical all the time because using a real name might be a safety concern for certain people and it might discourage good stories from being told. So whether or not it's a fully ethical thing to do, it is industry standard, so I just wanted to make you aware. 
However, there are some places that do not require to use your real name when publishing, including Inflamed Brain Alliance. Some homework in quotations that you might want to try would be to write some memories as scenes. Step one, when you think about your Pan's Pandas journey, what are some memories that stand out to you? Mark them down in any order. Step two, look at your list and start writing down a scene based on the memory that calls out to you in that moment. If it helps, you can start out with the line, I remember when, and then describe what happened and how you felt. Step three, when you finish that scene, glance at the list again and transition into writing the next memory that calls out to you based on the scene that you just wrote. Let me show you a little example of what I mean by transition. Here's a little thing that I wrote. I remember getting bullied in middle school for having pandas. Kids would ridicule the name, say I made it up, and laugh at my tics. This brewed a shame for my condition, so I stopped talking about it. While I may not have had friends growing up, I did have my family. They were always there to support me, and of course, they never made fun of my twitches or my fear of vegetables. They held me with warm hugs during panic attacks because they knew how hard this was. So the line that transitions these two completely different memories together is, while I may not have had friends growing up, I did have my family. I start off by talking about kids bullying me, and then I go into talking about my family because my brain naturally transitioned those two things together. I'd like to briefly talk about some opportunities that Inflamed Brain Alliance would like to offer. So firstly, we have the Healing Stories Anthology, which will be a collection of stories by those struggling with or supporting someone with pans or pandas, because we really want to increase the representation of pans pandas in media. We're open to all types of writing, as long as it's on the shorter side. You can write your healing story for yourself or publish it elsewhere. You can do whatever you want with your healing story, but if you'd like to get your story out there for the pans pandas community and see your work alongside other authors in the pans pandas community, we'd love to include your piece in the anthology. The Inflamed Brain Alliance also has a blog which is already up and running on IBA's website. We're open for submissions and you can submit the same story to both the blog and the anthology. If you'd like to submit to either of those places, just send your story as a Word document or PDF to healingstories.inflamedbrain.org and in the email let me know your name, pronouns, and what name, if any name, you'd like the story to be credited to. You can use your real name, a pen name, or you can even remain anonymous if you'd like. Let me know what province you're from, if you'd like this story to be published to the blog, the anthology, or both, and then how pans or pandas has affected you, as in are you living with it or are you supporting someone with it? Currently, our submission guidelines are that the story must relate to pans pandas in some way and must be by an author who is Canadian, whose life has been affected by pans or pandas. So that's all I have for this video. In my next video that I make with IBA, I'm going to be talking all about how to use fiction to write your healing story. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining me today.